everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA Physical Science class, and I am doing this video um, to do a quick review for your semester final that you can kind of watch as you need to. So we're going to go through some of the um, some of the concepts that you should know for your final, and I'm also going to direct you to my website where I actually already have all of the essays posted for the final exam that you can work on ahead of time. And when it comes to your final, um, you know, make, make sure they're in your own words, but you can just take them directly from the work that you've done in advance to help you prepare for the final, okay? That'll really help with the time and, and that kind of stuff as well, right? Okay, so um, the final exam is, just going to um, double check here, but it is, 42 multiple choice questions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, fill in the blanks, and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 essays. So it's pretty long, as you can see. So that is why I'm giving you those essay questions in advance so that none of you feel, you know, that pressured when you take the final. So get them all done, get them in the a Word program, and then just copy and paste them directly into the test. So let's start with um, what you need to know. Okay, um, I'm going to find my cursor here. There we go. So one of the things you're going to need to know is um, how to add vectors together. For this, all we're looking at is making sure you take direction into consideration. So, for example, if you had somebody traveling, um, somebody walking on a train, and they're walking at a rate of three uh, miles per hour to the east, and the train is going... Um, 45 miles per hour to the east, then you would just add those together, right? 3 plus 45 to end up with the person traveling at a total rate of speed of 48 miles per hour to the east. Remember, vectors always include directions. However, if that person was traveling at 3 miles per hour to the east and the train was going 45, um, I can't type, 45 miles per hour to the west, then actually they're going in opposite directions. So you want to take the 45 minus the 3 in that case, and you end up with the person's rate of speed at a net 42 miles per hour to the west. Okay? So just take that into consideration when you're doing any of these vector problems. Um, another question you have to know is speed is distance divided by time. Average speed is total distance divided by time, whereas instantaneous speed is the speed at that moment in time. Say, for example, if you're driving from point A to point B and it takes you um, an hour to travel, well, let's do half an hour, a half an hour to travel um, 30 miles, right? So basically you're taking 30 and dividing it by a half, which is the same as, you know, to be divide by a half, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1. So 30 times 2 is 60, so your speed would be 60 miles per hour. That's your average speed. But if you were to Figure out, you know, at any moment in time on your journey, you might not be traveling at 60 miles per hour. You might be going slower or faster as you're passing people on the highway. If you slow down and stop, um, any of those types of things change the instantaneous speed. Okay, so the difference between speed and uh, velocity. Remember, velocity includes direction. Oops, I'm sorry.
So it's direction plus the speed. Sometimes we say, um, you know, a vector is including the magnitude plus direction. Magnitude is just the numeric value. So, you know, in this case, 60 miles per hour to the west or to the east or to the north. Um, so acceleration is the next thing. Um, so acceleration is the change in speed over an interval of time. So you would take the final velocity minus the initial velocity and divide it by change in time. So for example, if Mark was um, throwing, let me try to think of something. If Mark was taking off in a race and he reached um, 10 miles per hour in, let me try that again. He reached 10, he reached two meters per second, say, in 10 seconds, okay? So you're gonna take that change in velocity, which was the final velocity of two meters per second, minus the initial velocity of zero meters per second, because he was starting from, from still, right? And then divide it by the total number of seconds. So two divided by 10 would be like one fifth or um, tw 0.2, oh, of course, two tenths, Mrs. PG. And it would be two tenths meters per second per second. Or we also say it's meters per second squared. So remember the units there are meters per second squared. Okay, so one of the types of acceleration that we have on Earth is little g. Little g is the acceleration due to gravity. And sometimes we mistakenly call this gravity, but it's not the force gravity. It's how fast you accelerate if you're falling due to gravity, okay? Yes, the force of gravity affects how fast you accelerate, but little g is actually acceleration. It's not um, force. So what are the things that, uh, when we look at an object's weight, weight is equal to mass times gravity. Okay, let me put a, an asterisk. So the things that are affecting your weight are going to be um, and see, I did it too. I said gravity, but I meant gravitational acceleration. So weight is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. Weight is a force. So weight is a force here. You measure your weight in the scientific, uh, in the SI system, you measure it in newtons. Which is a unit of force. Okay, which is equal to um, a newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. So if you look at the units of measure, kilogram is mass, meters per second squared is acceleration. So a newton is mass times acceleration. Okay. All right, another thing we talked about this um, semester was projectile motion. So this is a curved path um, due to, you're going to have uh, acceleration in both the X and Y directions. Is that 
right? Thinking about that for a moment, I don't think that's actually correct. Um, you have... Um, to movement in both the X and Y directions, I'm just going to say. So what can happen, for example, is if somebody, let's say a, a car drives off a cliff, it's still going forward, but now gravity is pulling it down. It's only got one force acting on it, and that's gravity. So it follows this kind of curved path, which is a projectile motion. And you can have, for example, launching a cannonball. Launching a cannonball pushes it up or launches it upwards. So you've got that kind of inertia, but then you have gravity pulling it back down. So it's basically the curved path of something due to gravity pulling on it, but it also has motion in both the X and Y direction, X being horizontal, Y being vertical. Okay, that's what we mean by that. All right, so then um, we talked about Newton's laws. Law one is inertia for every, uh, no, this one is um, that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. It's basically saying that an object will only change its motion if it's, um, if a force is applied to it. Okay, and then we have law two, and that is force equals mass times acceleration. This is a <clears throat> mathematical relationship. It says if I increase the mass of something, I'm going to have to increase the force in order to get it to accelerate at the same rate. <clears throat> or it might say that um, if you have two objects, one big and one small, and apply the same force to both objects, you'll be able to accelerate the less massive object faster than you will the, the more massive object, okay? So it's kind of giving you the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. Fancy, fancy, fancy people often say that force is directly proportional to mass, but indirectly proportional to acceleration. Holy smokes, what does that even mean? Good gravy. Can't I today? What that means is that if I increase the force, then, I, well, I'm gonna try the other way around. It's easier to understand. If I increase the mass, I'm gonna have to increase the force and I'm gonna accelerate it less. So, so force will go up, but acceleration goes down. So that's Acceleration is inversely proportional, but mass is directly proportional. That's what that means. Um, another thing that was discussed this semester is momentum. Momentum is equal to um, mass times velocity. Momentum is given the formula P equals M times V. And basically, you know, momentum is really something we talk about when it comes to collisions and how it transfers. Um, we're almost out of time for this video clip because I only have a 15 minute time limit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into different parts. So this is part one of the semester two final exam review, and you'll have to tune into part two for the next 10 questions.